Alright, so in this video I'm going to go over functions, and functions are very essential in making anything happen in your game. They are kind of the things that you will have to use every single time if you want code to run. And yeah, so I'm going to go over uh, three main keywords, the in, out, and ref. Those are different keywords that you can use inside of functions uh, to modify or work with variables. And I'm also going to go over passing through parameters and functions and how to have a function return uh, a variable. So let's get started. Uh, I'm going to create a new class, new C Sharp script. I'm going to call this functions. And I'm going to attach this to my example game object. And we can get coding. All right, so the first thing I want to focus on is how to make a function. And it's pretty simple as the structure is kind of given to you as soon as you create a mono behavior in C Sharp. So it's mainly the return type, and then the name of the function, and then two parentheses. And inside of these parentheses, you're going to put in any parameters, like our keywords are in, out, or ref, or yeah, any other parameters that you want your function to work with. So once again, to create a function, you type in the return type. If you want to create a regular function that just runs instructions, it doesn't return anything, you use the keyword void. And void, uh, in a way you can say is, this function is void of any returns. There is nothing that will be returned from this function and can only be called. And yeah, so it's like a null return. So to create a function uh, that doesn't really return anything, you type void and then the name of your function. I'm going to call this my function, uh, my function, and then two parentheses, and then your curly brackets. There, and that is how you create a function. All right, now to call a function, all you do is inside of our start method here, that is automatically called by the engine itself. You just put in my function, the name of your function, and then the parentheses. Now inside of your function, to test it, you can put debug.log, and then put in whatever you want to debug, and I can just say my function has been called. So now in the first frame, we call my function, and when we call my function, we execute the instructions from top to bottom. Since there's really only one line, it's just going to call this line here. And then if we had more instructions, like more debug.logs, then it would uh, call this then, and then this, and then this, until there's no more instructions. And yeah, so now if we go back into Unity, and we hit play, we go to our console, and you'll see my function has been called. Now let's go over passing in parameters to your functions. So to pass in parameters into your functions, it's pretty simple. Uh, in the, the function that you want to have parameters inside, like let's say we want to add two numbers, and just get rid of that. What you're going to do inside of your parentheses, you're going to put in the type of the variable that you want. So the type I want to work with is an int, because I want to add two numbers together. So I can do int, and I can call this a. And if you want to pass in another parameter, you put in a comma here, and then you do int. Uh, B or any other parameter you want. So I'm just going to work with A and B here that are both type of int because I want to add these numbers together. So now with these two variables, they can only be accessed within this function. They cannot be accessed anywhere else. So now I can actually add these together and debug.log it. So I can do debug.log and sum plus and then A plus b. And you gotta use some bed mass here. There you go. And now that you have variables inside of your function, you'll notice where you called it there's an error. And the error is there is no argument given that corresponds to the required formal parameter a of my function. And it's basically saying it needs a parameter. To make a parameter optional, uh, you simply put an equal sign after your uh, your variable inside of your my function parentheses because uh, it makes it optional you pre-assign it whenever it gets called so now if you put uh, let's say 5 let's just set 5 there and now you'll see it just goes over to B because this doesn't have any default it can go to so we can just also set this to 5 and there that is how you would make a variable optional and when you make a variable optional they have to be at the end of like uh, your little variable list inside of your function parentheses. Like for example, if I put uh, set b to something that has to be set up, you'll notice that 
we get an error and it says optional parameters must appear after all required parameters. So putting an equal sign and a default value after a variable will make the variable optional and must be put at the end of your uh, variable list in your parentheses of your function. So int a equals 5 and int b equals 5. There. Set those to optional for now. And to actually pass in parameters, you basically just pass in a, a value of that type. So uh, the type of this variable here, int a, is the type of integer or a number. So what I'd pass in is two different numbers for a and b. So let's say I just want to add 1 and 1. So if I do 1 and 1, there, I am passing in two integer values. And whenever you put a comma here, you're basically going to the next variable. So here I have 1, and this is before the comma. So since this is before the comma, I am assigning the variable a. And since this one is after the comma, I am assigning the variable b. So now, whenever I call this function, it will uh, add a and b together, which is in this case will be 1 and 1, and it will debug.log the sum, which will be 2. So now if we go back into Unity, and we hit play, and go to the console, you see the sum is 2. Now let's go over the in keyword. Alright, so we learned how to pass in variables, now let's put on modifiers to these variables inside of our variable list to give it some special properties. And the first thing we're going to go over is the in variable, or the in modifier. So I'm just going to stick to A for now, just set it to A, there you go. And now we're going to work with in first, so if you put in here, what this will do, it will make A read only, so we cannot change it. Like look, if we have in int A, right, this, base, this function is basically taking in an integer. And if we try to change the value, you'll notice that we have an error here, and that is because cannot assign variable in int because it is a read only variable so putting the word in uh, before your the variable type and the name inside of your function variable list will make that variable read only all right so that is in and now let's go over out so out um, in its in its name itself out it outputs a variable for us to use in the function that we called this function in so Whatever we call our function here, this will output a variable for us to be able to use in this function. So, out int a, and we assign a to 10 in here, we can keep that in, and whenever we call this function, to actually receive the variable, we have to put out int, and then whatever you want to name the variable within this function, so I guess b. So whenever we call this function, and we pass in int b to be outputted to, uh, our function will assign to the output link here, set a to 10, and therefore make b in the function where we call this function the same value here, which will be 10. So to test this, we do debug.log b, and if we go back into Unity, and we hit play, you'll see that it will say 10, and that is because in our function where we have the out uh, parameter, we output the number 10 to the receiving end of where we call the function. So now let's go over ref. All right, so for ref, um, ref stores um, in its name, it stores a reference or a pointer to a another variable that we have in our class of the same type. So to make a ref, you just do uh, ref before your variable name and then the type and then the name. So for ref to work, uh, let's say we have a private int and we're using int again because it's the same type as our ref which is required. So private int and let's say just say b. And now what we do is in wherever we've called the function we type in ref and then our variable. So anytime um, we change uh, a in here, which uh, stores a reference to B, B will also be changed. So if we set A to 10, then B will be changed to 10 because we store a reference to this variable in our class. So now if we just debug.log B, 
And when we debug.logb, we're debug.logging this. And we go back into Unity. And we hit play. You'll see that it says 10. And now let's go over functions having return types or functions that return variables. Okay, so to make a function that actually returns a variable, you basically replace a void with a type. And the type I'm going to work with is int. I've kind of been working with that for the whole video, so we're going to use int again. So instead of void, we use int. And there you go. Now you'll see a red underline on your function. If you go over it, not all code paths return a value. And what that means is that Anywhere where the function goes, like inside of an if statement, inside of a loop, it has to return an integer because that is the type it is working with. So to return an int, you simply type return and then a number. But if you're using another type, like let's say a rigid body or maybe a, um, like a float or a bool, you'd have to return the same, um, uh, a value of the same type. So let's just work with ints for now. So we'll just have this return 10. So whenever we call this function, it will return the number 10. And to actually store the variable, what we do is we assign it to a variable of the same type. So we have a private int of b, and since it is type of int, it is the same type as our my function variable. So to assign it, we just take our b variable here, b equals my function. And there you go. So whenever we assign b to my function, we call this function, and whatever this function does, maybe some sort of complex math that it needs to do, and then we assign b with the number that we got, or a, a value of the same type that we got. In this case, we got the number 10 for our int variable. And once again, we're gonna debug.log b to test it, so let's go back into Unity, and we hit play, we go to the console and you'll see it, it once again it says 10 and that is all I have for this functions video uh, we went over different variable keywords how to make a function uh, parameters and return types in the next video I'm going to go over coroutines which is uh, a variant of a function in unity it is mainly used for making delayed functions that uh, make it wait a couple seconds or until the operation is complete so stay subscribed for that, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.